Sung Jin Woo versus Igris. How this impossible fight was really won. We got more Mr. Any News cut content about solo leveling. Let's check it out. Go. It's not an understatement to say that Sung Jin Woo got pretty lucky here. For the first time since the double dungeon, he unfortunately found himself confronted by an opponent considerably more powerful than him. Like, not only was Igris's strength leagues beyond his own, but by Sung's own admission, so too was his agility and defenses. I hear that we should have never fucking won this fight, man. Like, I hear the common consensus is we were outmatched. Sung Jin Woo kind of, like, got a quick one in, right? Because what happened? Igris, like, threw him onto the fucking throne, and Jin Mu was, like, going like this on the throne. I'm like, whoa, he kind of looks like he should sit on the throne. And then, what happened? Igris slowly walked up, and Jin Woo was like, call the ambulance. But not for me! And then boom! And just stabbed him in the eye, right? And then we got a quick series of bursts and then we kind of just like won, right? And he was like, yeah, probably shouldn't have won this one. But hey, every, everything is fair in war. There wasn't a single element in which Sung thought he could beat Igris in. How was it that he was still able to come out on top then? Main well, character that energy. that was a bit in part to Sung's ingenuity and another due to Igris's confidence. It was a sequence of events we didn't Ooh, get to the see impact in the frames. Anime, but one that explains how it is Sung was able to pull through here. So, as we go through everything the anime left out from the fight, we'll also take a look at the interesting details from the scenes leading up to it. An in-depth look that I hope will make this already amazing episode a bit more enjoyable. Let's get it, Ad! Before we get started, Ad! Though, have you ever wanted to play as Rayer Asuka? L listen, Tower of Fantasy, do not play Tower of Fantasy. Like, l listen, go go support Mr. Any News and whatever fucking sponsorships he has. Tower of Fantasy... It's shit game. Tower Fantasy, fucking play Wuthering. What? Bro, get a fucking Wuthering Way sponsorship, Annie News. You can get it. During chapters 38 to 41 from the manhwa and chapters 45 to 49 from the web novel. Something I'm sure we often forget about Sung is just how little he really knows about video games. I mean, mm -hmm. we saw he was unfamiliar with how to navigate the system, but that's something that I'm sure almost anyone would struggle with. Is, is he Asuna from Sword Art Online doesn't know how to open a menu? Bro sucks at video games, huh? When he was confronted with the concept of the job change quest, though, that was a topic he felt he needed to do a bit of research on. Like, he knew it had something to do with furthering his build, but the full extent of what it meant was completely hmm. oblivious to him. So, as he searched online through the various wikis of video games, Sung <sighs> became enthralled by the numerous benefits a class advancement came with. Bro actually just went on and researched what job advancement and stuff is? No shot! Yo, if he's an actual Korean citizen, you know, if this is supposed to be a person from Korea, he definitely played Maple Story, bro. Ain't no way! Everything he knows about video games should be derived off of Maple Story. From new skills to class quests and. Ooh, class Path of Exile. Weapons, Great game. Everything he saw made him excited to complete his own job change. Is this Jin Mu in the webtoon? He looks so fucking confident and saucy here. Sure, he was fearful of the dangers that could possibly rest within such a quest, but the rewards he knew he'd get eclipsed any sort of anxiety. So, for now, he could only focus on the potential bounty awaiting him. This is fairly standard behavior for Sung in general, but I find it comedic that a system designed to be identical to a video game is being used by someone who's never played one. Hmm. It makes it all the- I guess he was too busy. No time to play Maple Story when fucking mom's in the hospital, dad left her a fucking pack of cigarettes and for milk and we got no money. Gotta fucking hustle and make money. I guess we got no time to play games, huh? More impressive when Sung comes up with all these ingenious ways to game the system. One particular one that wasn't mentioned in the anime was the plan Sung came up with to essentially level check himself. Since his main goal was to conquer the demon castle, level check. he wanted to make sure he could handle more red name monsters like the Cerberus. Where could he go to find other red name monsters like that then? Well, the only other place he could think of was the penalty zone. This centipede thing was like red name in the beginning, right? I'm sure we've leveled up a lot more so we can like handle him, but I'm still holding down with my theory that like, listen, listen, I think everybody like this is pretty obvious now, right? If we're trying to hold out, right? If we're trying to, what's happening in the anime right now? We haven't watched the finale yet, but it's like, hold out for as long as you can and you get better job and we haven't done our fucking daily quest and people are like, look, look at what the, look at the time that Jin Ah, uh, you know, fucking uh, made the sandwich. 11 p.m. We're one hour away from daily reset. Nah, come on. This is this is a fucking wrap, bro. This is, I've been calling this shit since like episode fucking three or something. So before Sung would commit himself to attempting the demon castle again, he decided he would first make a trip back to the penalties. So we went back there, if he okay. Could the centipedes there without any hassle whatsoever. Then Sung would be certain he could handle the demon castle. Did he kill it him? It was a decent plan that involved him intentionally avoiding the daily quest. In the manhwa and anime, he. So, 
in the anime, this is never abused, but in the webtoon or the, or the light novel, right, or like a source material, he was already do testing with it? Treats it more like an accident, but in the novel, it was a deliberate choice to gain XP huh. and verify his power. A slight okay. change in context that fully highlights the difference between novel Sung and anime Sung. To flesh out Sung's decision in the anime even more, though, missing his dailies was never actually an option for him. He was fully intent on doing them after the job quest was done. He believed he could finish the job quest in only a few hours, and was planning to go back home <laughs> nope. then do his dailies after. Little did we know. It was know. only after he realized the job quest might actually make him miss said dailies that the benefits of going to the penalty zone started to become apparent. It was a thought he had never considered until forced to think about returning to the penalty zone. So, for Sung in the anime, it's more of an accidental thing that happens by chance, whereas in the novel, Sung's journey to the penalty zone is exactly Intentionally what Intentionally exploits it. It's a clear depiction of the different levels of desire Sung has towards getting more powerful. Now, Sung searching the wikis did come with a bit of negatives too, since in the comments mm -hmm. of each, there were always people complaining. There were those hey, who comments? expressed disdain after having chosen the wrong class. <laughs> Do I have to delete my character? I'm worried that I picked the wrong class. Fuck, if I knew about the tier list, I would have picked a different class. Why is my class the lowest in the DPS chart? I should have looked at the tier list! <laughs> I always do that shit too, right? You got a new game, you got a new classes to pick. What do I do first? I don't, I, all I do is just YouTube research, right? Best tier list, DPS chart, you know, of the most recent meta, blah, blah, blah. And then you fucking choose like these specific classes. Then you look for the gameplay of those classes to see, okay, of these uh, meta characters, classes, which one's actually fun. And then I pick it and then I play it. And then what happens? Balance patch hits, your picked class gets nerfed and everything else gets buffed. It is what it is. This planted the idea that Sung might end up in the wrong class himself, and it made him think that his build might somehow end up useless for it. Fortunately, such a worry was very minimal since Sung was confident he'd be given the assassin class. From and the skills he used to the No spoilers, no spoilers. I think everybody, right, would assume that Sung Jun Mu, using daggers, using you know agility, being fast, he would be an assassin. But there's got to be a twist, and everyone's like, oh, you got no idea, bro. You got no fucking clue. From the skills he used to the weapons he fought with, there wasn't a doubt in his mind that he would get anything other than Assassin. It just wouldn't make sense considering everything he's built into so far. Yeah. So as he planned for that and the various encounters awaiting him inside, Sung would accept the quest and initiate the creation of it. The reason why I say creation is because- This video doesn't fucking spoil the actual job class, right? There's no shot. This episode 11 cut content's gonna spoil that, right? Because the prompt he saw after accepting it was that a dungeon was being created specifically for him. It was as if the system was loading up its own version of a legacy dungeon. One that, as we saw, based many of its enemies off opponents Sung has fought before. The implications of such a message. Right, the legacy, because like every monsters like we fought in the beginning were ones that we already fought. And it was like the dungeon was like, wasn't there like a mention about how different stats and you know, different attributes were actually helpful in defeating different monsters? For example, you needed like agility to defeat a certain type of monsters like mages. There was like skeleton knights and other stuff like that. It was, and this is like the ultimate culmination of everything that we've all done so far. Reinforced the idea of someone behind the system and that's only further supported through the various clues from later on in the episode. Someone clearly designed the system, obviously, because this is according. Okay, if, if we're a player, then we're playing a game. That means someone created a game. And this game creator, this thing that we call the system, right? I think it's synonymous, right? What the system wants Sung Jin to do is basically means whoever created this game is trying to make Sung Jin stronger. Why? I don't really know. There's not enough information so far. Like, how does this benefit Sung Jin Mu? And I think the, um, I, I think the, where the theory ended before, I think um, people were saying that this is just like a, a battle of gods kind of deal. Basically, think of it like this, right? There's like different entities known as gods, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, it's just like an arbitrary term, but there's these gods. You can think of them as like the creators of the game who then have their players to fight amongst themselves for entertainment. You know, that's the kind of the concept of the battle of the gods, but uh, maybe, I don't know. I, I don't know where they're going with this. The good luck was the first bit of emotion the system had ever displayed before, and it- Wait, good luck. I missed that last episode. I straight up missed this last episode. Damn, the system says good luck? Damn. It was an anomaly Sung was sure to take notice of. I missed that. The other clue was the face we saw when the gate was being created. What? There's a face? When the gate was being created. Uh, 
I can't really tell who the fuck this is supposed to be. Um, does it have to do with the smiling statue? But that could also just be an artistic choice relating back to the know, statue from yeah. episode one. Yeah, kinda, maybe? Either way, Sung was intrigued by the way the system decided to treat this job change quest. It was fundamentally different in both form and function, since the portal that appeared was unlike any of the ones made during the instant dungeons. In fact, the more Sung examined the way this portal was created, the more he came to realize it was a gate being made right in front of him. Not only did its creation resemble the same phenomenon which occurred when gates appeared, but its very shape and aura matched the natural gates as well. Because these gates are created at the end of the day by the system? The system creates the gates? I don't know. But if the same gate is being created like that and sell the same shit, like, like there's different gates, right? The, the gates that like the instance dungeon and the class, you know, advanced dungeon, these are automatically being created or manually being created by the, 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 the creator of the game. And they also create these random monster gates? I don't know. I don't know. Where are we going with this? was surprised to see that the system had just manufactured an artificial gate right in front of him. It was as if it was trying to replicate the real world methods in which Sung had been leveling with. So, if. Replicate the real world methods in which Sung had been leveling. As in, any news is now directly implying that the creator, or the, whoever the creator of the game is, right, is copying this natural phenomenon and making it his own. That is what the implication here is, right? So, not the same person, but. The phenomenon of gates is already happening, and then the, the creator of the game decided to make their own gates based off of that? I don't know. If this I was in fact a bonafide gate with all its properties, then Sung was curious to know whether other hunters could enter it as well. Can they? Unfortunately, no one was around to test that with, so it was a thought that would remain unanswered until the next quest formed gate. Now, the quest itself was adapted damn near perfectly, but there were a few minor details worth- What did you just say? With, so it was a thought that would remain unanswered wait, wait, wait. next quest formed gate. That question, as in, can we bring other people into our own instance dungeon or other gates, right? Specific made for us, remains unanswered until the next quest form gate. Does this not any news basically answering that, hey, next time we're gonna get like a quest form gate, we're gonna have someone coming with us? Is he not saying that? Is this a spoiler? What, what, what was this? To test that with, so it was a thought that would remain unanswered until the next quest formed gate. Did she not just... Well, we don't know the answer. We don't know the answer, right? He didn't say whether or not they actually were allowed to enter or not. It's saying this question remains unanswered. So he's hinting... He's hinting, maybe he's trolling, maybe the wording here actually means nothing, and I am reading too deep into this, but... Now, the quest itself was adapted damn near perfectly, but there were a few minor details worth mentioning leading up to the Agris fight. Mm -hmm. The first is the minimal lighting which failed to illuminate the interior. Minimal the lighting? The torches made a path somewhat visible, but because the light didn't extend to any of the walls, Sung assumed he was just in a cave of some sorts. The fuck who forgot to fucking pay the electricity bill here, bro? It had created this dreary atmosphere in which his only method of sight was via perception. Okay. Perception was, was necessary for this. The first night that he had actually looked inside the armor to find the entire thing empty. There wasn't any dark liquid like Okay, okay. Egress also, there's no like person in the armor, right? That's cuz like I was thinking I'm like, hold up. Are these are just moving armors, right? What the fuck is in the armor? Nothing, right? It's just moving armor? Like how we saw in the anime, but instead just an empty husk as if the foe he fought yeah. was nothing but... That's what I'm assuming Igris is too inside, yeah. after killing three of them that two surprisingly dropped some sort of loot for him. It was the highest drop rate for loot he had ever seen. Not to mention the most 66 effective drops he usually got were garbage. So, this breastplate added seven more percent to his physical nice. damage reduction, nice. and it could only be used effectively if his strength was over 80. If it wasn't, then he'd become over-encumbered and his movements... Heavy slower. rolls. Oh. Fun fact, I didn't even know about this when I was playing Elden Ring. Basically, once your equipment, you know, gear scales about across a certain weight, you do like, instead of light rolling, you do heavy rolls. And I didn't fucking understand this. And I was like, why am I moving so slow? I never fucking understood this. And I was like, oh, it's because my fucking, I'm too heavy. Over-encumbered and his movements slowed. A mechanic that would serve as indication for Igris's strength later, since the ability to move so fast with his armor made it clear yeah. his strength was at the very least over 80. And he has a fucking greatsword, he moves so fucking fast. Two. Now, 
Sung could only assume the better loot was because he was fighting humanoid monsters, since in a video game setting, it just made sense for humans to be carrying more than, say, bugs or monsters. Racist? No. Speciest. Does that make sense? I don't know. Like, just the idea of gold being dropped in a pouch was unheard of until now for him. Sung did also try to pick up other things in order to sell them later, but anything that wasn't a drop like the weapons the knights were using was immediately rusted then turned to dust. It huh. seemed those items abided by the same non-transferable rules as his did, making it so anything that wasn't a drop item was unobtainable. That sucks. It was as Sung delved deeper into the dungeon that the more enemies he encountered, the more- At least Mr. Kim's sword, you know, not once but twice kind of clutched for us and didn't just disappear. Or he realized they were based off his own experiences. In the manhwa, he had found a few extra ways to take care of the knights while- Oh shit, he just put them in a fucking headlock in the web too. <laughs> the mage was an opponent he immediately recognized as the one from Huang's group. In fact, the instant Sung sensed a collection of mana gathering behind him, he had already taken steps to get behind the person casting. That was such a cool moment. He wasn't so naive as to let himself get hit by the same attack twice, a move that showcased just how much he'd learned so far. So was that the actual identical move compared to, you know, what Huang dong Su's mage actually used? That's what he's kind of implying, right? The animation kind of seems similar, same with the effects. This was two hours into the quest, then another three would bring him up to that 66 fatigue level. If he was to gain four more, then a noticeable debuff would start to slow both his mind and body. I fucking hate the fatigue system in games, man. Like, I hate it. Like, gear, like, weights, you know, the bag the amount of stuff you can carry, durability of items, fatigue system. Like, I hate that shit, bro. So, of course, Sung wanted to sleep in order to try and take advantage of his inherent recovery skill, but any time he would, the dungeon would just spawn even more monsters. No time to it rest, okay. It would seem a core trial of this quest was to complete it without any sort of recovery whatsoever. That didn't mean Sung couldn't reduce his fatigue, though, since the counter for that would just decrease naturally over time. So long as he managed who he fought and when he fought them, he found he was able to keep his fatigue fixed at around the 40s level. So, it was after a total of six hours had passed that- If only we had like a companion, man. If only we had like a little familiar or some shit that would like fight for us so that we could just like chill and just like rest, you know what I mean? But probably we don't have like a pet or like a familiar or stuff like that. Sung had finally made it to the boss room. His fatigue was sitting at a nice 43, his level now at 45, and his build fully kitted with drops acquired from the enemy he fought. That gauntlet was like super important, right? I think the gauntlet was mentioned to be like come to super clutch when- it, it, You saw the effect of it too when Igris was like attacking and the gauntlet, like he, he caught it with the hand or some shit, right? What? The one that's most important to highlight out of all of them is the high-level knight's gauntlet which yeah, applies gauntlet. something in addition to physical damage reduction. You see, not only did it provide 3 more percent in the way of reducing incoming damage, but it also came with this ability that protected his hands from injury. For a B-grade item, for this effect to be like prevents all hand injury sounds like a fucking hack. I get it if you say like reduces damage coming, but to word it like prevents all hand injuries, as in like no matter what, your hands are fucking indestructible. Sounds kind of insane, and that's been highlighted when, you know, Igris versus Sung Jin, there's a moment where he caught the sword, right? I'm not sure if this meant his yeah, hands were this, to all this. incoming damage, but it is the reason he was able to catch Igris's sword here. The wording is like, what do you mean? Like, just like, all hand damage nullify? Like, if not for the additional effect these gauntlets came with, there was no way Sung would have been able to win like this. It's a fairly important attribute that I'm surprised the anime didn't include. In they kind of skipped it, yeah. When it comes to comparing the actual fight of Sung versus Igris, if we're talking about the manhwa, the fight was pretty much perfect. Okay. The action was captured panel for panel, and the intensity of it all was equal to or even better than the manhwa. Better than the- wait. Like, captured panel for panel, and the intensity of it all was equal to or even better than the manhwa. Like, so Sung get dribbled- I th oh, this is the fucking Broly moment, right? This is the Broly moment. Like a basketball just burr, 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 boom, 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 boom. That was so sick. Yeah, I mean, it, I, I think that, like, people definitely would agree that the animated fight was a lot better than the webtoon. I haven't seen the webtoon fight, but, like, no matter what, if it's, like, a fight, wouldn't anim like having it be live animated just automatically be better? But then it's, like, look at One Punch Man, right? People say that the manga is better animated than the anime itself, specifically for season two. So it's like, huh, 
Isn't solo leveling webtoon like really well drawn too? That's like that's like the huge um highlight of it. The the art is fucking fantastic. But at, at least the anime studio here is just going all out and they're animating it right. So it's like inherently like you like a fight scene's gotta just be better in the anime because it's you're you're showing the fucking fight choreography. But sometimes there are exceptions where the anime studio might just fuck it up like One Punch Man season two and people start memeing how the manga is better animated than the anime as if that makes a sense. That's the whole point. The novel paints a slightly different story though, since while Yessi was still getting tossed around like a volleyball, there's an actual explanation- I love the way that he tilts his head and looks down there's on an us. Actual there's a moment in the fucking episode where we wanted to throw hands, and we basically dropped our weapon, and Igris also was like, oh? Then he tilted his head, and he looked down, I'm like, ooh, so fucking menacing. A different story though, since while Yessi was still getting tossed around like a volleyball, there's an actual explanation. He should have said salad, tossed around like a salad. Explanation for how Sung was able to land this critical hit here. You see, the fight in the novel was nothing but hands from the very beginning. Oh. Sung knew he wasn't going to be able to pierce Igris. Really? So you're saying that that's an anime only thing? When um, uh, Sung Jin Woo dropped uh, weapons and said, let's go bare hands. And then Igris was like, fuck it, let's do it. So that never happened in the webtoon. This is anime only because they're saying, you know, Annie Nisa is saying, it was hand-on-hand -on -hand fight immediately, so... In the manhwa, but the novel. Okay, so the webtoon, the manhwa and webtoon is the same thing. I call the, I call the manhwa and webtoon because that's what it is, right? I, it's a webtoon to me. I know that the overall category is a... The higher category is a manhwa, but the, if you get more specific to it, it is a webtoon. But okay, so the novel didn't have that, but the webtoon and the anime did. Cool. Armor, so rather than try and fail like how he knew he would, he instead initiated with fists right from the get-go. The first clash had Igris actually tried, but after seeing how weak Sung was in comparison to him, that's when he began to act a lot more confident. <laughs> Sung could tell that Igris was way stronger too, because in addition he was to his with us? being leagues above his own, both his agility and vitality seemed better too. No matter what he tried, Sung couldn't seem to get the best of Igris anywhere. So, as Igris and Sung both came to the same conclusion, Igris would just nonchalantly walk up to Sung after having mm. tossed him. He would casually approach Sung as if he was Dio, then release an unrelenting series of punches without any regard for his own defenses. What I mean is that, despite Sung still somehow landing punches, they were so ineffective that Igris didn't even feel the we're need to We're just so outmatched. Them. He would simply tank whatever punch Sung threw head on, then continue his own attacks as if to say he wasn't even faced by him. Damn. This is an important sequence the disrespect. to take note of, because when we get to the part where Sung is sitting at the throne, the counterattack he planned relied solely on this. That's the funniest shit too, because like this is what changed everything, we're just getting our ass bopped, and Jim was like... <laughs> and then he's like, is he here yet? Is he here yet? Like, psych, gotcha, motherfucker! It took advantage of that blow-for-blow -blow mentality Igris just displayed for him, and used it to guarantee an attack of his own. So, Sung would catch Igris's sword using the additional effect of the gauntlet, then counter with a punch exactly like all the other punches he threw. This led Igris to think a punch was all it was, so while he was expecting to proceed with blow for blow like before, Sung would catch him by surprise and produce his dagger the instant before actually making it- In the happen. eye! He knew Igris wouldn't dodge if a punch was what he led with, and that in turn allowed him to get a free hit straight to one of Igris's weak points. But like, it's an empty armor. Right? It's, it, there's nothing in the armor, right? But like, you can see the eye shining. What's in there? What, what, what is in the armor? You ever think about that? Like, like, I understand that we got a quick one and we pierced the eye and they got a quick one, but it's like, if the armor is just a moving sentient armor and there's no actual body in it, it's like, what, are you, what, 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 what the fuck are you stabbing? What the fuck are you stabbing, huh? What's in there, huh? What, how, <laughs> I, I, I know there's no point to fucking nitpick like this. There's absolutely no point. But it's like, if you really think about it, it's like, all right. It's a fucking moving husk of an armor. But you fucking stabbed it in there. Now it took damage. What, what's in there then? I, I don't fucking know, man. So what Igris thought was going to be a weak, blunt attack he could continue to tank was instead of piercing blow straight into one of his eye sockets. He never considered eye that sockets. some might Got one. up his attack okay. right in the middle of it. Plus, even if he did... The amount of time Sung gave to react to it was infinitesimal. It was a clever play that took advantage of everything Sung had observed so far. 
So, with that turning the tides of the battle, Sung would use tenacity to tank the shockwave of smashing Igris into the wall, then crit his face over and over until the A lot of crit over. damages, yep. A hard fought battle he definitely shouldn't have won, but pulled through nonetheless with a bit of luck and intellect. I mean, at the end of the day, all that matters is if you won or lost, right? We had no business winning, but we did, so it's like, hey, skill issue. If you're wondering how it is Sung knew his dagger would disappear after Igris grabbed it, well, that's because he had tested the property with Jinho in the previous episode. Right, because like the way that Igris summoned the sword was so cool. It's like the force, you know, lightsabers, Jedi's, you know, Star Wars, you can be like, vroom, and then go like, tss. but then Sung Jin Woo doesn't need that. He can just be like, <laughs> just fucking, you know, pull it back out of the equipment inventory. But then there was another skill, a runestone we got, right? I forget it's, what it's called, Ruler's Hand. I think that is basically what Igris does with the great sword, right? So, just like how I had mentioned in my last video, any item that says it's non-transferable will disappear if ever in the hands of someone that isn't Sung. Okay. It's a Just like the potions. unique to the yeah. system that makes Sung's inventory his. But you can still like make people drink the potion even if that potion would disappear in that other person's hand. So there's like some like loopholes around it. Like the other people can use those items to an extent as long as they're not the ones like holding it or touching it. The rest of the episode leads us into the actual job quest and that's a place that will be good to pick up starting next episode. So, if you liked hearing more about this epic fight between Sung and Igris, or just please like and subscribe. If you missed any news video, he always gives us such great summaries of the stuff that we missed out. And yes, we will be watching solo leveling. You know how this works. We start late, right? I'm gonna give you an end news cut content. Then you're gonna fucking comment. Why is episode twelve? Please, episode twelve. Don't worry, it's coming. It's coming.